then I really had to I had to bring out the spreadsheet and I charted all this stuff. I said, what's what's the best option for you? You know, I chose to kind of matrix it out and I said, Lord, you know, at the level I'm at right now, I've never been through a challenge like this. Where do I start and what do I do? And so I matrixed it out, tried to put the proper people around me to encourage me. My only regret is that I wish I would have had enough faith at that time in my life to say, okay, I'm going to forego this for another three months and I'm going to, I'm going to seek out another alternative treatment, you know, as much as, as hard and fast as I possibly can. an incredible story here today a mother and son who have each overcome such incredible health challenges and challenges that a lot of people thought were insurmountable and not only did they beat these challenges back they did so at the height of the pandemic we're here to talk about two incredible stories with two incredible people with that we welcome wendell and lorraine mosley to the program thank you both so very much for taking the time thank you thank you and wendell uh your face is very familiar to the people who run in the montgomery heart and wellness circles there you were featured in heart and soul of a champion season one so it's it really wow. great to make your acquaintance i kind of feel like in a way we already know you well thank you i i you know i don't look at myself as a uh as a host you know a brand name or anything like that i just you know i'm really grateful and thankful i was able to participate and to get a chance to know dr montgomery and and also the other cast more in a in an intimate way. I mean, we really had some real good fellowship time together. There was some some really good stories that were shared. And at this, you know, one point, everybody came to an equilibrium and we said, you know, you know, we need to live and to live, we need to uh, exercise. We need to have a good, a good spiritual backbone and we need to eat well. And that prescription for eating well is what Dr. Montgomery had provided to us and enlightened us. And uh, we're still doing it. Clearly. And uh, you each look so healthy and happy here today. Uh, but boy, you, you know, just as we were saying a few years ago, uh, not really the case. You each were in the thick of it. So Wendell, let's start with you, uh, who the audience again is, is familiar with. You were diagnosed with prostate cancer. How old were you at that point? Because you still look like a young man to me. Yeah, so that was that was two, uh, two and a half years ago. So I was uh, about 51 and a half. And I had uh, gone to the my primary care physician and um, said, man, you know, you, you look like the picture of health, but your PSA um, is, you know, had been in increasing because I, I made it a point to go to my doctor uh, every three to six months just to just to get blood work and things checked out. And he said, uh, you know, go to your urologist and check it out. And so I just picked a urologist, or one that he, he uh, recommended, and I went there. I really didn't really like the approach. I decided that I, w I would um, go in and see a uh, intern uh, specialist internal specialist. And um, so I went to see this particular person and he began to track and monitor the uh, the PSA. Initially, I mean, he was giving me some like antibiotics and he said, if you take the antibiotics and it drops the, the PSA, then may maybe we, we don't have this, you know, as a serious situation as, as, as you might. And so I did the antibiotics, the PSA dropped. I began to do, you know, a lot more intense exercise and workouts. I, I, I lost weight and I saw that it, it, it did drop, but then I couldn't correlate why it would increase because there was a point there where I was, you know, I took, took the antibiotic and it went up. And so it went up to, I think about the normal range, you know, for an African American male, you, know, you want to try to keep keep it below three. And mine went up to four, four and a half, five. And at that point, my internal medicine specialist uh, said it's time to go get you checked out. He recommended a urologist in, in Dallas that you know he trusted, and um, that urologist took a look at the at the trends and said, hey, you know, it's, I recommend doing a biopsy. And so I, at that point, I mean, I didn't know what that was or, or anything. And so, but because the, the doctor was, sounded pretty, you know, he was pretty serious about what he was saying, you know, you need to get this checked out. I went on ahead, uh, had the biopsy done in January of 2021, I do believe. And, um, you know, a week after the, um, the biopsy, I went back for another office visit. And, you know, the, the doctor came in the room and said, you know, look at your test results and, you know, you, you tested, pro uh, you know, positive for prostate cancer. And so, I mean, I was at that point, I just, I didn't know what to say. 
I thought that, you know, I, I've been an athlete pretty much all my life. Uh, you know, collegiate athlete, played play football, always tried to keep myself in, in pretty good shape, tried to eat well. My thought of eating well was like, okay, I would go get the best meat or the best fish, the best cuts. And then my vegetables were almost like a dessert or an accessory. It wasn't the main dish. So after the uh, results came in and the diagnosis came in, um, now was the time to, you know, kind of make a decision. And to be honest with you, in these situations, you're kind of like in no man's land. I mean, it's like, you know, the doctor basically gave me a book. He said, don't read the section about improving your health with fruits and vegetables and supplements. You know, read the all the sections where surgery, or some other type of medical intervention is uh, is required. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me stop you right there. He specifically said, don't even bother reading the chapter on food that was in there. Exactly. I, I still have the book and sorry I didn't bring it here, but it was a book about the prostate and, and how to avoid the disease. And also if you have the disease and you need the, the intervention, it had, you know, these like almost 15 different interventions from surgery to radiation to cryotherapy. And then you got to matrix these treatments out to figure out, okay, is this the best for you? Is it going to cause, you know, some other problem down the line? And so um, I remember him handing me the book and he folded the chapter for nutrition and said, don't worry about this one as if, you know, you're, you're, you're too far down the line or, or it's not going to help you. Okay. So <laughs> I, I mean, boy, uh, there's a whole heck of a lot that we could talk about there. So, I mean, at this point, have you told your family what's going on? What are your emotions? Are you feeling isolated, alone, maybe even a little bit embarrassed? I've heard that from some people who have received a cancer diagnosis. Just kind of disbelief, you know. I I never thought that, you know, I would, I, I, you know, that would be me. I just thought that, you know, at the appropriate time, I would let people know, and I, I didn't want to alarm anybody. Of course, you know, my wife has been great throughout through this time. My my, my two daughters and I had a just my, my son was like six years old at the time, and so you know, so I, I was very careful who I told. I, I only tell people that I thought could could encourage or that I could pick up the phone and call them again if I felt like I was having a bad day or something like that but um but it took a lot of thought and I, I literally had to I'm an engineer by education and trade and I really had to I had to bring out the spreadsheet and I charted all this stuff I said what's what's the best option for you and at the time you know you're only thinking about these mechanical medical interventions because that's all we know I mean that's that, that that's how we trained up you know you you know you go to school myself I went to school for 10 years you know did bachelor's and master's degrees and you, you're taught you know to go out there on a living, get some good insurance, get the good insurance because you're going to need it one day. And, and I'd always heard, heard people talk about this, uh, a midlife crisis or something, you know, I'm like, what is that? You know, I'm, I'm an athlete. I'm, I'm, a, I'm cruising through this. As long as I, uh, you know, can, can exercise and eat some good food, I'm going to be good. So it, it was, um, you know, to, to receive a diagnosis like that, you know, I, the first thing I did was I went to, and, and I'm, I'm, my mom and I, we're Christian people. We believe in Jesus. And I, I went to my prayer closet and began to, to pray. I remember the first weekend after the diagnosis, I, I just fasted and I uh, spent time in my closet. Whole, one whole Saturday, I was just in my closet, just praying and asking God for direction and what I should do. But in, in saying that, I mean, there's still some action you got to take, you know, and there's some men who they want to wait and see. I wasn't at the, the maturity, the level of maturity as, as maybe some of those those people are, I, I would say. And uh, and so I chose, you know, I chose to kind of matrix it out. And I said, Lord, you know, at the level I'm at right now, I've never been through a challenge like this. Where do I start and what do I do? And so I matrixed it out, tried to put the proper people around me to encourage me. My only regret is that I wish I would have had enough faith at that time in my life to say, OK, I'm going to forego this for another three months and I'm going to I'm going to seek out another alternative treatment, you know, as much as as hard and fast as I possibly can. But I just felt like I didn't have the time to do it. I had work commitments. I got family and you're in a box at that point. You know, it's like, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to take a month off from work to go travel around the nation and find a holistic medical specialist who can't guarantee you something. These people are guaranteeing you to, to get in there with surgery, get get the disease out and, and start your road to recovery. So 
my matrix said get the surgery so i had in april of 2021 i had the definitive surgery right. it was successful and um i have no loss or or issues the, the normal issues I, I don't have them at all never experienced any negative impacts oh boy that's a lot to go through lorraine i gotta ask you you know as, as wendell's mom to hear your son tell this story i mean it, it still has to kind of wrench at your heart no it does and we were there uh the weekend that he did have the surgery and um, I had not yet uh, gone, you know, to um, to Dr. Montgomery and started my journey yet uh, with um, what I needed to do and for myself. And it was uh, it was so hard to leave him, you know, there. And we, you know, we could only come for a short period of time. And then, you know, with COVID going on and all of the things, just one person could go see him. I never did get into the hospital, but one of my daughters was able to go and be there, you know, with he and Angela. But, you know, it's like, what do you do? And how do you take this at this moment? And it was just like something I couldn't believe and I didn't want to believe. But, you know, I just prayed and asked the Lord, you know, for his his direction, because, you know, we're not void of having anything happening to us just because we are his children, I feel. And but, you know, when we do go through those things, we have to know that he'll he's with us. And so we, you know, we all kind of weather it together. And then I, I had to leave because I had to start my time with uh, with Dr. Montgomery. And I had the 28 day challenge, you know, for that was coming up. And so I I told him, I said, you know, we uh, I'm going on and I'll be back, but I don't know when. But, uh, you know, it was um, it was a while. But, but, you know, we kept in touch and, and did uh, what we had to do for him that way. And if my daughters had to go, well, you know, and I couldn't, well, I just stayed, I stayed behind. But he knew that I would be there if I could. (laughs) And uh, and I was having some things going on, you know, with my heart and all. And so it was not an an easy task at all. But, you know, we made it through and, and God is faithful. That's all I can say. And we just, my situation, I was just thankful. I said, Lord, you let this happen. And then he also reaped the benefits of what I was going through because he got to meet Dr. Montgomery and, you know, to uh, follow up with the things that he had been experiencing. So. And isn't that funny how that works out? Yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it was almost fortuitous because I, I can recall that before I had the surgery, we went in to visit her local heart specialist. And of mm-hmm. course, you know, if you go into the office, there's lots of people you can tell they need help. They're lack of a better word. They're not in good shape. You could you can look at people and tell they're not in good shape or in good health. And then there's a sign that says, get your heart scan today. So mm-hmm. you kind of say, well, okay, these people, you're going to find something, you know, uh, you bring anybody in and you do a heart scan, you may find something. Uh, but certainly with people that don't look well, the chances are that, that you're going to find something. But when we went in, I mean, it was more, it was a, um, it was a tour. It was, a, you know, it was a kind of a routine. Oh, okay. You know, we do this all the time and, you know, they made us feel comfortable that you know you have here's the you know the chances of something bad happening like 0.001 percent and so based on the data i'm a data driven person so i said okay based on the data he's never had a bad surgery he's or a scope to to kind of look at the uh, the artery and and if you know if he can you know kind of uh you know balloon it up and and get in there you know he will and we, we just took it from there so we came home from the appointment i talked to my sisters about it and gave them the statistics Everybody was like, okay, you know, it seems like it's relatively low risk. So, you know, let's go ahead and even though it was so it was invasive or, it, you know, maybe is that the word non-invasive? This was, uh, you know, either way it is. I mean, he had to get in there with a scope. And so it was almost like surgery. And so, mm-hmm. so yeah, so that, that was a difficult thing is to say, okay, mom's, you know, beyond 70, should she really be doing this? And then between that time and when she actually had the surgery, I made the decision to have surgery because I was like, well, I'll be honest with you. At that moment, I was like, my mom's 70. How old are you then? 77? 78. 78. I was like, she's going in. She's got enough courage to take care of herself. I was like, you know, I, I should probably do the same thing. And so I made a decision to go in and have the surgery. 
And when I got out of my surgery, like she said, you know, they went back home. Um, I talked to her, I said, you sure you want to do this? She's like, yeah, I'm doing it. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and do it. And she went in and, and did the surgery. I was communicating with my sister, Nora, you know, the whole time via phone. And she was updating me. We were talking. Then I, I got a call from her and I could tell she was doing the surgery. It was kind of urgent. She said, we're going to go to a larger hospital. The doctor told me, you know, he may have pinched the artery and you really need to be taken care of right away. And at that point it was like, wow, okay, is this really happening? And, you know, I couldn't leave here because I was under doctor care and there was only one person that could go into the hospital with her and so that's how she wound up in the hospital and then you know she can kind of tell you that part of it and we um i think she was moved over to the medical center and that's where we met the doctor that gave us a reference to dr montgomery lorraine what was your initial diagnosis what took you there in the first place we've kind of tiptoed around a lot of it but we never got yeah. the exact diagnosis well the um i have a history of high blood pressure and i um then had been going to my regular cardiologist, you know, for several years. You know, you take tests every now and then, and I don't know, he never really came out and just said, you know, okay, we need to do this heart cath on you because of this, that, and that. And uh, we did the heart scan and everything. So he said that I needed to do a heart cath and uh, then they would, you know, be able to pinpoint the problem and all. And uh, so, okay, we, you know, we made the appointment and everything. And the heart cath was on April 30th of 2021. And when they went in, he said that, you know, the, the A order just tore. And he, you know, kept going and he said, well, I just, you know, I just can't keep going because the whole artery will probably just dissect. And it just not anything that I thought would ever happen. And, uh, you know, if anything, <laughs> uh, they said if, if it would have happened and it did happen, that it was best that it happened on the right side of the heart, if that makes sense, because it would, you know, it had chances of healing up. So I'm looking around and saying, okay, so it happened on the right side and I'm just really blessed, right? And I'm still alive. So that was, uh, that's where I was at that point. And then I, uh, you know, went on to the medical center and uh, they did another heart scan on me. And it said that, you know, it looked really, really good that I had chances of it, you know, just healing on its own. So we just waited for another couple of weeks and I was seeing the doctor in the, in the medical center, Dr. Estrera. And so he told me to come back in another couple of weeks and I did. And he said the aorta was healing quite well because we did another scan. And of course it eventually healed. And the, the report was that it healed so well that it appeared as though it had never happened. And of course I was thanking God and all of the people who attended to me, of course. But of course, you know, our bodies are certainly miraculous and, and we'll heal, you know, if we have the correct nutrition. And I feel like, you know, I was helped a lot because he was the one who sent me to Dr. Montgomery. He said, it's, it's too risky to go back in to do anything else, to try to do a heart cath or, you know, anything like that. And no one, no one would touch me. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I was like, you know, I'm 78 years old and, and they're thinking, well, you know, all my, my arteries may explode or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, my family was very supportive of me and they were right there with me and they, you know, had questions. And the some of the questions were, you know, does the blockage prove I did have, they find out I did have blockage and that it proved to be something for surgery. Then of course they said no, because you know, everything was too risky. And was it advisable to do the hard cath again? No, you know, that's too risky. And so we also asked, you know, does the blockage pose a significant risk for heart attack, stroke or further artery damage? And we, you know, it, it, he, he was very patient with us and, and answered questions uh, that we had. But again, you know, all we could hear was that, no, no, no surgery. Everything is just too risky. But with the question that was asked, Wendell had submitted 
And he asked, he said, is there anything else that can be done diet wise or, you know, any other solution considering my age at, at 78. And so I talked with him, the doctor on uh, my next visit was a tell visit with him. And he said, oh, I have someone I'm going to pair you with. And I said, okay. He said, his name is Dr. Baxter Montgomery. And he said, so this is how I got to meet him, to know him, and he made the appointment for me, and I got in to see him, and I've been working with him ever since, making progress. I'm still not close to, you know, my perfect blood pressure just yet, but it's so much better. I've had so many things that, you know, so many benefits from the program that I've had with Dr. Montgomery. And I've lost about 46 pounds. I've always wanted to lose the weight, but you know, the other doctors just never really gave me a, just a, a way to do it as such. And I'm just thankful. Every time I think about it, I, you know, it just tears come. Right now, I just say that I, I'm just thankful to have met Dr. Montgomery, to have been there. I did the 28 day challenge. My family was right along with me. They all spent every day just supporting me and, you know, doing anything. I had the, um, I did the uh, infrared sauna for, I had 20 treatments of that. And anything that he, you know, suggested that I do, I've tried to, you know, try to do. And it's just been a great journey. I've never had done anything that I thought was as difficult, but and it's still hard day by day, but you know, we, we work through the, the hard times and just go on and do what we have to do. Eventually, you know, you think about, I'm just gonna do what I have to do for my body to get well, to stay well, and to enjoy the days that God has for me. I don't know how many I have and none of us do, but uh, we work hard to, you know, to live each day as fruitful as we can and as healthy as we can. And, um, you know, we, we were never really bad, bad eaters. You know, as Wendell said, we, we chose the, the best meat <laughs> and the best of, you know, this or that or whatever we're going to ha have. And we, you know, we don't look at it anymore that way. And we just, all of us are not all plant-based. Right. We, you know, in the family, but they do uh, respect the fact that we are trying to be that way, all of us and do the best that we can with Lorraine, our health. Let me, let me tell you this, uh, as a guy who himself has lost close to 300 pounds, I will tell mm -hmm. you that for you to have lost that weight at that age, I think you are a hero to millions and let your name be sung from the mountaintops that when people doubt themselves when they are in their 70s or perhaps even older than that and they say, it's just too late, I cannot do it, say no, no. It's, never, to Lorraine. it's never too late. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's never too late. I love, I love to hear that. And I'm so glad that everything worked out so well for you. I want to try to firm up this timeline here because it sounds like a lot of what you guys were going through was literally at the exact same time. So Wendell, how <laughs> long was it between your surgery and when your mom had her procedure and her whole ordeal began? I think it was like, I think it was a month. It was wow. about, about, yeah, about a month. Mm -hmm. And um, keep in mind, you know, I had already had the surgery and when she went in, and she met the doctor at the at the, the medical center. The experience is the best teacher, right? I'd already gone through the process. I can't say that I felt bad, but I was 50 at the time, 52 years old, about 240 pounds. And I was on three medications, three blood pressure medications mm -hmm. um, and, and, and a cholesterol medication. And just the stress of going through the prostate thing, just, I mean, you, you just can't imagine, you know, some of the stuff you read and, you know, it seems like even when I would go on YouTube, it was just like stuff would just pop up about prostate, you know, and oh, if you do this, you got to do this. And if you don't do this, this is going to do this. And this is a really, really challenging season in my life. So i have gone through the experience. My first thing was to the doctor was, do you have anything, another recommendation beside a surgery of any, any sort? 
And like my mom said, he recommended Dr. Montgomery. And that's kind of, um, at that point in time, I, I said, you know, I'm going to sit and listen and watch uh, the progression. And she would um, send me pictures of her going into the, the sauna. And I saw, you know, that she was actually feeling better. She started feeling better. She said, well, I'm walking around now. And, and I don't, because I think she, she was walking on a, a cane at one time. <laughs> <laughs> she almost had a, like a walking stick. And my joints are feeling better. I'm not walking with the cane. I've, I've lost, you know, X number of pounds this week. My, I don't have mental fog. I'm waking up, going to sleep, sleeping better. And I'm like, why wouldn't any human being want that? Um, especially as, as you're aging. And so, yeah, so it was, um, it was definitely a good entry point. And, and as I would watch her from week to week to week to week, actually get better, get better, get better, get more encouraged, more encouraged, more encouraged. At that point, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to get off of these medications and I want to get back to optimal health. I want to feel like I used to feel when I was playing, you know, I was 20 years old and playing college football training. So I, I took the challenge, so to speak, and I went in to see Dr. Montgomery. And man, that's where yeah, you're man. talking about a, an experience. That's when <laughs> things got better, I'm telling got you. harder, and but it ended up getting better. But here's the thing, like talking to you and seeing what we did in the documentary, it seems like you kind of attacked your own health with the same resolve that you had with your football career in college because you went from being a walk-on player to earning a scholarship at quarterback. I mean, like, who does that? That is not an easy thing to do. You went at this, both barrels blazing too. Yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, if there's one – um one thread in my life you know we all have our our threads right you know you can look at somebody's thread and they may have a thread of, su of success some somebody may have a thread of, of difficult times my, mine happened to be a thread of grace and adversity and uh, every time i face adversity i get some grace you know to go along with it and which would take take you through it so i think god puts in you the things into you and you can you can perform them as long as you're in communication and relationship with them is what I believe. Mm. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, my story from, uh, from college was, I mean, I was a starting quarterback in high school, came into an adverse situation where my knee uh, in practice is like a fluke accident. My knee mm. buckled and had to end up getting surgery. And, um, at that point in time, you know, all the colleges that were looking at me or that I wanted to go to, it seemed like it was out of reach. And so I uh, had a cousin of mine who reached out to my mom and said, hey, I want to give him, um, introduce him to some uh, some coaches at University of North Texas, go down there and interview. And that's what I did. And I walked on in my uh, sophomore year, was awarded a full scholarship that took me through the, the remainder of the five years uh, or four years. And I, uh, you know, I was one of two in my class that that graduated out of about 60 athletes that entered in and then i went on to uh to do some more engineering studies and got married went on to graduate school and that type of thing but yeah i mean it, all that stuff prepares you for yeah. what's coming down the line and so yeah. i saw another ad adverse moment and i said okay let's get at it again <laughs> and I, I you know i just used the same same resolve like you say, you know, you're facing a, a, an opponent that you know uh, is supposed to beat you that game. You don't go into that game saying, I don't know I'm going to lose. You say, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to prepare correctly. And we're going to do this thing somehow, some way. And I had the same same mentality, still had the same mentality right now. Yeah, man. Well, the game you were playing was life and death. And it was, I mean, I don't yeah. want to paint this as an epic battle, but you're talking about something as serious as cancer. You yeah. have the procedure, but then you started to have like some emotional setbacks as well, some setbacks along the way, even after the case. What were you going through? I don't know enough about medicine to know the progression of, of how you how you walk a patient through certain things. I just, I don't, I don't know enough about it. But I, you know, I'm an engineer and we have a problem solving method. We have a, a way of communicating with our customers and the facts that we bring to the mm. customer are real and true. If I'm designing a bridge, you best believe I better make sure that those calculations, the stresses, the strains, the loads are correct or what's gonna happen that bridge is going to break. In the medical field, even though it's a science, it's not really a science because the, the doctors are, they're really trying to help and they can help. I mean, if I break my, my, my finger, I'm going to a doctor. 
no doubt. We're going to get it wrapped up. If I get, you know, a cut or anything happens like that, I'm going, we're going, we're going to handle that. There are some things that in that particular space, I think they don't have a true conviction and a hope other than, you know, my, my tool is surgery, radiation, pills, and all this kind of stuff. So my thing was, okay, um, after the surgery, you know, you go in and you, you, you do this, uh, they, you know, they do, um, I think uh, it was uh, 60 days after the surgery. They do, um, well, after the surgery, they actually do the, uh, the bi they do another biopsy of the whole area that they took out, uh, the, the gland that they took out uh, and any surrounding areas. And my, I mean, mine came back extremely well, uh, all negative margins, no spread, nothing. And the whole a idea was that, you know, as, as, you, as you heal, you also take these intermittent tests that, you know, for your PSA. And I would always take what that was called an ultra sensitive, which kind of went down to the molecular level and say, okay, you know, this is 0.00001 or whatever of, you know, the gland left in or something like that. And so after a year, I start to see it creep up. And the doctor that I was seeing at the time is almost as if he began to panic, you know, and that caused more of a panic in me. And I was like, I don't need this. And so I, you know, at that point in time, the right juncture with, with Dr. Montgomery is calm, just, you know, let's slow down, let's calm down. You know, your, your PSA can go up and down even when it's out. And it just depends on if there's any residual tissue there. It may not be disease tissue, but you know, if the residual tissue is there, then you know that's related to the skill of the of the doctor that's doing the surgery. I was confident I was seeing a very uh, very skilled surgeon. Uh, you know, he was a middle aged fellow, uh, very very good. But I noticed that after my surgery, he left his practice and moved to San Diego. And so I was like, whoa, I need you here. I need you here at least for a year, please. So, so we can walk through this journey. And he said, no, I, I got to make this move for my family. He was an Indian fellow and, you know, really big on bringing the family together. And, and I said, well, what, what's one of the reasons why you're moving? He said, well, just the holistic thing, you know, to get family back together, to get our health together to start eating and exercising properly. And I, it was very interesting that he imparted that to me because he probably had seen so many different situations to where he's like, man, I'm gonna save my family. Mm. Mm. And that's what he did. I'm not gonna share, the, share his name, but that's what he did. And uh, I've had communication with him, you know, since that time. And he would always really encouraging and say, man, you know, don't, you know, don't panic. You know, if this goes up to this, you know, don't panic, don't panic. And so um, at some point in time, I felt like, okay, I got to turn off the other voices of the other doctors that all they do is look at the biopsy, look at the results, surgery, whatever, you know, intervention is needed. And then, oh, if we miss something, then we'll just, we'll go in and, and correct it by another mechanical means. And so, um, so in meeting Dr. Montgomery, you know, that was just like, that was key. I, I the other thing was it had to be in uh, June or J July, I think it was J July timeframe in, of 20, 2021. Actually, 2022, because my PSA, it was like 0 0.014 or something like that. But the doctor said, okay, it's, it's getting to be detectable. We see what's going on. So he said, well, you know, so what, what do we need to do? Well, you know, and I'd already read up on what the next steps were. You know, either they're going to do a, a ultrasound or a PSMA, uh, which is the what was the latest technology. So I went in and I did a full body PSMA and I'm in this tube and I'm just praying and quoting scriptures and things of that sort as I'm in there and uh, took about 30 minutes, came out and then um, then the results came back. Well, I didn't want to see the results. I was I was in with my faith. I was like, man, you know, this I'm, I'm going to be good. There was, you know, I had good margins on the biopsy that they took of uh, me after the surgery, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be good. And so uh, I didn't, I didn't want to see, I didn't see the results. And so I had, in the meantime, I was like, okay, let me go back to my problem solving matrix. What do I do in the meantime? So, so I'm gonna go see some more specialists in the meantime, and I want them to look at the results. And you still never looked at them. I never saw the results. I never wow. saw the results. And so wow. I went to a place in Atlanta. I talked to them. They, they, they I mean, they are super nice people. I really believe they care about folks and um, eradicating disease, but you know, they were still, they were mechanical. At that time, I wasn't 100% sold on what Dr. Montgomery was saying, because I, I did have some doubts. And I told him, I said, you know, man, how, how am I gonna do all this, you know, with, with food? 
you know, how, how if something's wrong, how I'm going to, I'm going to eradicate that with, with, with a good diet and exercise. It just didn't, didn't just never heard of it before. And so, um, so I arranged to see some specialists in Atlanta, Georgia. And during the meeting uh, that I had with the specialist, he went through the, he pulled up the scan. He went through the scan. He's like, he went through, he's going through it. And the, the way a PSMA is, it's like when they see a, a spot that is a potential area of disease or calcification, it'll like light up real, it go like on the screen. And so he was going through, my, he went from my head, the arms, everything. Then he went to the back. And then when he went to the back, there was something that, that kind of flashed. So he, he rolled it back, rolled it back and said, hey, that could be something right there. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, it was, he said on like on the rib. And so he said, I got, let, let me, let me bring this scan to my board. So they have like a, you know, the facility that we're in, they had a board of directors. They, you know, it was like, they take you from station to station to station. It's like, okay, you're going to see the doctor. They find something. Then they're going to take you to another specialist that says, okay, you need to do this, you need to do this, and then you need to do this. So I'm in there and I just started, I just started singing one of, one of my favorite gospel songs. I just had, I had to, to stay calm. Doctor comes back in. He says, this thing is so small. We don't know what it is. Uh, did you, did you have a, an old injury or something that may have healed? And at the back, in the back of my mind, I said, I think I know. Yes, I did. I didn't tell him at the time. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. And so at this point, this guy, you know, is not gonna, you know, none, you know, we're not giving you a death sentence or anything like that. But our method is to go in and x-ray your whole pelvis and or spot x-ray it, you know, to make sure that, you know, this is nothing, nothing got out. I said, okay, well, and then he looked back at some of my results for the, um, what do you call it, the biopsy that I had after the surgery. It was like, it doesn't <laughs> make sense. And so I said, well, what, what do I need to do? I could have someone come in here and do what he called a drive-by ultrasound. So we got ultrasound techs that just come in the room, they do ultrasound for you in a couple of hours, you get it. And then, you know, we give you a, your diagnosis. I said, I want whatever's going to be definitive. He said, well, if you're able to stay in Atlanta another night, we can do a biopsy on the spot that seemed to light up. And I said, at that time, I was, it's, it's tiring, you know, mm -hmm. and I know why people, you know, who get into those situations, they, you know, they, they get sick, they get tired and, you know, and some people, they, they, they can't overcome it. So I said, I want to, I, I want to do the biopsy, you know, going to the exact spot. Where you, that you saw and make it definitive. And so that's what he did. I, I called Dr. Montgomery and Dr. Montgomery was like, what's going on? I said, well, I told him the whole spill. And he said, what do you, what, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'm, I'm here. I've already done this PSMA test. They've already done the results. I got to come out of this with as close to definitive as possible. So the next day I had the biopsy as I was getting the, the, the injection, you know, to, uh, to basically I had to go to sleep again. So as they're, they're administering that, I'm, I'm like, I just didn't see what was next. You know, I, at that point there was, you know, some people say they can't see past that particular moment. I just couldn't see past that day. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, you know, whatever it be, you know, I'm just trusting in you. And uh, if I don't, I can't see. Yeah. I, I could. I'm telling you, I couldn't see past that moment. I Which say, sounds you know, like it, there. Yeah. You you strike me as the kind of guy who probably did not have that many moments in your life where you could yeah. not see what was next. You're so mm -hmm. analytical right. and data driven. Right. You have a pretty good hypothesis of what's about to come. I would right. imagine that alone brings its own kind of anxiety, even though you're a man of faith. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it did, and so it was like. But some, you know, sometimes, you know, when when you're in the middle of some some things, um, whether it be good or bad. I mean, sometimes you're in. You know, when I played football, you know, played against University of Oklahoma. There's ninety thousand fans in the stand. You know, and you you're in a moment that you don't really even know that you're in. And the crowd's going crazy and then all the noises around you and i'm getting ready to throw a football 20 yards down the field with a certain level of accuracy so that somebody else can catch it and run and so in that moment it's kind of when my faith showed up and i was like you know if i don't wake up i'm good and it wasn't a sad moment i was relaxed i was relieved and so we did that i did wake up 
<laughs> and uh, my wife and I went out and got went to a, a, a local uh, vegan place in Atlanta and we talked about it and I said I, I saw none of this coming but we just kind of talked about our lives how blessed we we have been with daughters that perform well in, in college and, and uh, son never been you know God has always blessed us with everything that we need and uh, we've worked hard too but we always have what we need and so bless us with great family and so I hopped on a plane. I called Dr. Montgomery, you know, right after the dinner. He said, get back to Houston as soon as you can. And let's, uh, let's talk. That sounds like him. That sounds like yeah. him too, right there. <laughs> yeah. Before we, we get back to, to anything else, what, what a, did that scan wind up showing? Did you? Uh... Yeah. So, so, um, so it was about two weeks. It was about two weeks that, you know, that it took you know, to, toward to get back, you know, for the results to, to, to return. And they, you know, it's, everything's now done on, all on your phone and the app, right. You don't really get too much of a, you know, welcoming letter or anything like that. But, um, so I it was checking my app every day. I was like, man, I'm checking. So I got up one morning, I saw this, that it said the results are in. Hmm. And so I looked at my phone and I just put the phone down, went outside, took a walk and I said, um, I'll be okay. And I opened it up, looked at it, the results, no malignancy found, mm. no malignancy found. And I ran into the bedroom where my, where my wife was and uh, I just started, I mean, I just broke down and started crying. And I was happy, I ran outside, I ran down the street. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, neighbors looking at me like, I didn't care. So I took a screenshot, sent it to my family, sent it to Dr. Montgomery and asked him, please look over this, make sure this is real, it's ready, you know. And uh, sent it to, there was another specialist that I, I sent it to and uh, they uh, they read it and said, okay, yeah, yeah. It's... And so from that from that point, you know, Dr. Montgomery was like, let's not do any more of that stuff. Let's, <laughs> let's, fo let's focus on, let's focus on some goals. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on some things that you think you can't do, but you really can. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on your mindset. And, you know, by the way, you know, let's start this 28, de 28 day detox. So I did that and he said, you know what? I got something else. I'm gonna be filming um, uh, a documentary. I have some uh, former NBA and NFL football players and I want you to work out with some real athletes, see, get you a baseline. And then, you know, for four weeks, we're gonna kind of track your blood work. We're gonna track your overall wellness instead of tracking the number. And he said, there's many, many more indicators out there that'll indicate if you have some type of problem or disease other than just a PSA number. And so we'll know what's going on by your overall, your overall blood work. And they go pretty deep. I mean, they really go pretty deep in looking at things. And so that's, that's what we've been doing ever since. That's like next level health. When you get down there, that's for daggone shit. <laughs> yeah, sir. But sir. I, I tell you what, Wendell, you know, the, your emotions, I mean, we're talking about something that happened months and months and months ago at this point, and mm -hmm. they just seem as fresh as ever. Like it wasn't lost on me. And I'm sure your mom picked up on it too, that you paused, you know, to kind of have to collect and gather yourself as you were kind of walking us through that. Um, yeah. And I mean, just the gravity of it. And now to see you out on the other side and smiling, um, and, and having the opportunity to do heart and soul, man. I mean, welcome to the other side, my friend. You know, the water is fine. Come on in, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, like, like I said, I mean, I made some great, great friends um, doing that exercise. I, I actually, Daryl, Mr. Daryl Green and I became pretty good, pretty good friends. And I kind of labeled him as my, uh, my senior mentor. And um, we, we talked. Did you tell him that he's a senior mentor? Like, do you, you use the word senior with him? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he, he is my senior, but uh, it was it was not in a, it's not in a derogatory way. Um, but but definitely, you know, he's got some things you know about his story that I I pay attention to, and he and I got some things in my story that he pays attention to. But he's a really he's like a you know really strong family man, strong Christian guy. I mean, and. You know, when you see, you know, the emblem of it, if you know, he knew his story and if you see the emblem of the NFL, I mean, he really embodies everything about hard work, stayed with the Washington Redskins for like 20 some odd years and knows every famous sports person that, that you, you can think of in the sport. And yet he's just this humble, approachable, down to earth person and, and really, you know, helped me kind of focus because I was like, man, you know, and there was a couple of times during the uh, during the shoots where I remember there was one time we we uh, we had worked out in the morning and we went to a farmer's market and then we 
I think we had to go back to another gym and shoot again. I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of take it easy. And he said, no, no, let's get it now. Let's do it now. You know, start, <laughs> start now. Hit it now. Hit it hard. Double down on what you're doing and keep that intensity. And you're going to see your goals come more in line to where you want them to be. And so I kind of took that approach. I think I was scaring my mom a little bit when, you know, we would go out. <laughs> 100 degrees in, in Houston in the morning, we would go and run heels for like an hour. And then we'd go back again in the evening uh, to Dr. Montgomery and his office and do the, the nutrition. Oh, let me say this. Morning, about 6.37 a.m., it's hot and humid in Houston. We do the heels and then couldn't eat. So we, we, we did the, inter we were doing the fasting. So we didn't eat until 11 a.m. So, and then I had to go to Dr. Montgomery's office for the other treatments, which is a sauna and some other things about 1.30. And so like, I would, I'd, I'd be pacing the floor, you know, waiting for like looking at 10.58, 10.59, 11 o'clock. And so my mom, she was fixing, I mean, she would, she would have me uh, salads and I'd get other stuff from Dr. Montgomery's uh, kitchen and, and be eating that on a daily basis. Then in the evening, we would go out for track practice and it was hot. Yeah. And we were just banging it out and, and, and you know, just doing what, it, what we had to do. And I know I was I was concerned at her because she was like, "Ooh, you you're out there in the 105, 110 <laughs> degrees or whatever. And uh, but that let me know that my, my, you know, through all of this, my body was still capable of performance. Yep. I was I was healing. I was losing weight. I was gaining muscle. My labs were coming back better. I mean, that's that's a heck of heck of an improvement. And to be able to do that on the field with those level of athletes to be able to wind back the hands of time and recapture where you once were when you were on the field yourself as a player in, right. uh, you know, at the University of North Texas and then going into Oklahoma, man, and playing in front of 90,000. That's a thrill. A lot of people would think, man, I'm never going to get those days back. But I got to bring your mom back into the conversation. She's so nice. She's just been sitting there quietly for so long now. You know, so how was your own health progressing once you started this 28-day challenge with Dr. Montgomery? Were you afraid of the food at first? Because I know for a lot of people, it's like, that's a big change. It's an awfully big change. It is. And when you've cooked, you know, I am rated myself as a pretty good cook all these years. Not a chef, but a cook. And, the, you know, you're used to eating a certain way. This was like, oh, my God, you know, whole turkey. It was cold. It's cold turkey. And a great transformation. Yeah. But the food, I asked him, I said, well, what if I get hungry at night? What's going to happen? They said, well, just eat any fruit that you have at home. But I, I am here to tell you that the meals that I, I had, I never got hungry. And that, you know, if I did every now and then, I, you know, I would get an apple or orange or whatever fruit I had in the house, bananas, and I would eat those. But it was challenging. It was, it was hard. And after two weeks, I told him, I said, my head is clear. You know, I can, seems like I can think better. And, and I was, you know, not had the brain fog, you know, that I had before. And it just went on and on. And I finished the 28 days. And that was not one day that I, you know, was slack on eating anything but the food that I received from the garden kitchen because, you know, you had to, he wanted you to eat the food that he had there at that place. And that's exactly what I ate and uh, and had my smoothies in the morning and, or if, you know, at night, if I needed to have something else uh, before I went to bed, I would get another smoothie. But, you know, it was there that I realized that we are what we eat and we are what we put in our bodies. Our bodies become that either healthy or unhealthy. And so I was just really, um, I wanted to go on from there, you know, and just continue because I was feeling great and my blood pressure was going down, um, my cholesterol levels, because they would do the blood work every two weeks and uh, my cholesterol went down 20 points. My, I was losing weight. I was anemic all my life. No more am I anemic. And I had other problems with my back and my knees, my, my joints. And as Wendell said, I was, I was on the cane. I was walking on the cane. And one day I came in Dr. Montgomery's office for a visit and I left my cane in the room. So he came back and I was still in the hallway. 
He said, Miss Mosley, you left your cane. Now he said, if you can do that, he said, you don't need one. And, uh, and I haven't been back on the cane since. But, uh, you know, it's I've had a great time on this journey, some hard times on this journey. But I here to say that I can walk up my stairs now, Chuck, and I'm, I don't hurt. You know, my I, I would get up like three or four flights of stairs and I had to stop and then, you know, go try to say, OK, I hope I can make it all the way upstairs. I can almost, almost run up my stairs if I want to, but I can walk all the way up without a problem, walk all the way down, no problem. And I told him, I, you know, I never really had the chest pains, but it was, I had that tightness in my chest and I would feel, you know, uh, as though I were running and I wasn't. And uh, so uh, all of those things may seem little to someone, but it was big for me. And um, so there, you know, I am, I'm just, uh, nothing's perfect all about me, but I know that I've been blessed and God has been good to me. And, you know, he has plans for all of us. And I feel like if we truly uh, never doubt that the things that he can do, because I, I had physicians to tell me, oh, Miss Mosley, you'll never, you know, your blood pressure will never be what you want it to be. And, you know, you'll never get the reversal that I wanted with my arteries. I don't know how much it's reversed. I don't even know if it has, but I tell you what, I know how I feel. And I'm sure that, you know, if we wanted to find all of that out, it's been a couple of years. And I told Dr. Montgomery, I don't care if it takes five years. And, uh, you know, uh, it. I will be doing what I need to do to get there. And I just thank the Lord and I thank God for Dr. Montgomery and his, you know, his dedication, his hard work and uh, his belief in what can be done when you eat the things that are good for us and that are right for our bodies. And, you know, he's just real passionate about that. And I appreciate it. And I thank God for him. Well, I can't think of a, a better way to end than that. You you both are just so inspirational. And I know that the uh, the future is very bright for a long time to come without the cane. I yes. expect you to get another year el uh, eligibility, Wendell, and suit up, you know, and go play. You know, you can be like a redshirt senior senior. I don't know how that would even work, but, <laughs> you know, I just see nothing but the brightest of futures ahead for you both. So thank you so much for thank taking you. this time. This has really been a treat. Hey, Chuck, thank you for the opportunity and may God bless you. And uh, may you have a prosperous remainder of the year and, and on, with your business as well and, and what you do. Thank you. Uh, you, are, you are changing lives. I am lives. So proud of you, Chuck. I, I just, you know, when I when I read about you and, and saw you, I, I just, you know, I'm saying that this is an example and this is something that anybody can see. You know, hey, I can do this too. And, uh, and you know, uh, I am, I am, I'm really proud of you. I don't know you that well, but then I'm, I'm just proud to know that you are the individual who undertook this and you, and you, there you are, you know, here just, I here I am. It's and, great. And there you are as well. So thank you. Thank you guys both so much. Thank you.